a quick review of what we did uh, we of uh, security so uh, one thing that you may remember we talked about yesterday was the uh, the concept of sandboxing right so we first of all we said that each app lives in its own sandbox the sandbox looks sort of like this right um, it's got its own Linux process and so on and that's called and the Linux basically manages security at the bottom level right um, then what we talked about was that um, this is managed, the way this is this works is based on the UID GID. So when you install an app, your app is automatically going to get assigned an, an, a user ID that's going to be custom for it, for its life, right? And it's not actually going to be UID and GID. So what happens is um, the file system that's private to the app is private because only this app has the read write permissions right to it uh, now so basically what we're doing is we're merely passing uh, the control from Dalvik down down to the kernel right to the Linux level based on the UIDs um, now permissions um, Android does specify high-level permissions they basically just end up mapping down to the low-level uh, stuff but it's done via defining a permission and defining a user's permission right so some if somebody wants to if an app wants to do something that's potentially dangerous that app must say I want to use this permission right <laughs> so this is a statement to the user to grant such permission to the app the user must then approve that right we already saw um, a little bit about internet permission right so what happens next is that um, if the grant if the permission is granted the app, or more specifically, that app ID, that app 47, that UID, is, is assigned to that group as well. So, for example, internet permission has a group INET, right? So, when you grant an app permission to access internet, you're essentially putting app 47 process into the INET group, right? At the high level, we're saying... My app uses permission internet. And that translates one-to-one -one down to, to Linux kernel. It says, you know, app 47 user UID is now a member of a INET group. And that's how we know it's got access to the internet. Okay? That's, the, that's how it's done. Uh, so that, that's, that's what that looks like. So, for example, that's what I was saying, the mapping. So permission, high-level Android permission is mapped to a low-level Linux GID. High-level internet permission low-level GID and so on and so on yeah so we can now declare our own permissions right uh, so you declare a permission so you don't have to just use you uh, so these were system permissions that we were looking at like write external storage camera read logs internet etc uh, now you can define your own permission by basically stating something like this name label description permission group and protection level um, so you just make up a permission. Now, um, there are a couple of things that are significant here. Not everything is, right? So uh, the name is going to be significant and the permission level is going to be significant. So the name uh, uh, the name is just the name of the permission. Usually it's going to be something like com example app blah, right? I think we had a com, uh, in our case, the permission that we had was this one if you remember we did this just as an example we define a permission here and we said com example yamba permission refresh we just made this up right um, so that's that name um, protection level is the other thing that's you it's a must protection level it has four possibilities normal it means a low risk permission that is automatically granted by default users have an option to review it before installing but are often ignored so in other words, it's like if you care about it, you can find out that it's doing such and such thing, but it's it's not a dangerous thing and you do not need to okay it before the app gets installed. Okay? It's a very low level, a, a very low danger uh, permission. Dangerous is your standard everyday uh, permission. Yeah. Name, there's, there is no name. Oh, it's the, uh, device wide. The the, the, there's no real namespace. It's all flat. That's what I meant to say. I'll show you how you can actually list this stuff. Um, dangerous means that um, 
it that uh, that it's basically something that's potentially dangerous, like in accessing internet, writing to a file system, etc. That's that's the most common thing. That's what you need to approve before you install an app, or else app doesn't get installed at all. Signature would be a permission that uh, is uh, granted automatically to whoever is signed with the same key. So if you have two, three apps of your own and you want them to be friendly to one another or only them to be able to access one another, uh, you would give signature and basically automatically they would be granted that and nobody else would be able to access them, right? And finally, you have the signature system. So it's basically just like signature but also adds system apps which are basically the apps that are baked into the platform. In other words, they're installed in slash system slash app folder, right? Um, label is not that important, just a piece of text. Description, same thing. And permission group is if you want to group things together. So, that, so you know, as opposed to having all the, you know, personal info, privacy policies, uh, permissions all over the place, we can group them together and have them a little more uh, obvious. So you can actually list what's on your device by doing something like this. Let me show you. So right now I'm listing all the available permissions on my device, right? So you can see, for example, I don't know, this, this, and this is categorized. So this would be a, the, uh, the, what do you call that? The uh, permission group, your location. So these are the permissions, i.e. their description in, for your location. Mock, mock location sources for testing. Access as extra location providers. Provide the commands. Course, fine, okay? Mm -hmm. Services that may cost you money, send SMS, direct phone, uh, directly call phone, uh, phone numbers, and so on and so on, right? So this is, uh, if you do this, it's per, I think it's if you do dash L, it's going to give you a different list. Uh, it's not dash L, it's like dash T. Maybe I should read the help file. Yeah, I should read the help file. Uh, but you can list dash F. Uh, per, uh, G D U F right. So this is grouped differently by name, right? So you can kind of see the permission names, right? So for example, all the permissions related to storage here, all the permissions related to phone calls here, all the permissions related to hardware controls here, etc. etc. Make sense? Um, so that's those are the built-in permissions. Requiring a permission, so you can require a permission in your uh, in your app, right? So just like I said yesterday, um, or whenever we talked about it here, right? It's kind of like a yin and yang. You have one app and you have another app, two separate processes, right? This is like a Chinese wall here, right? So this app says if you want to, it's got the service, right? If you want to start this service, stop this service, bind to this service, do anything with this service you better possess a, this permission that I'm requiring, right? So they need to match. If there is a match between these two, then this guy is going to be granted access to the service. Otherwise, it won't. Make sense? So that's, that looks like this. So for activity, you can control start activity. For service, you can control start, stop, or bind service. For provider, you, we haven't talked about them yet. For receiver, you get to control register receiver and send broadcast. Um, and it looks like that. You can also, uh, you can also uh, check permissions programmatically. So for example, you may not want to, uh, you may say, look, it's not like I don't want anyone to be able to access refresh service, right? Maybe, uh, maybe everyone can access the free, uh, refresh service, but only, only certain apps are allowed to access it between 9 and 5. Because that's a busy time and I don't want to be re refreshing uh, the data and maybe my rate plan with whatever carrier I have doesn't allow that, blah, 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 right? So how do you say s enforce a permission between 9 and 5 p.m., right? You can't really put it in a man manifest file. So you can do it programmatically, right? So you, could, you have this... Uh, Java, you know, helpers, uh, check calling permission, check permission, check permission, blah, blah, blah. So you can basically say, check calling permission, bam. You can do some business logic. And if you don't like what they're doing, you can throw a security exception and bounce them out. Okay. 
don't worry about that. And so yeah, so that's that's a little bit about uh, that's a little bit about uh, permission.